One more time. Jesus only. Have you ever thought about the mindset? Now, Stephen preached about get right with God and brought us up to the cross and, and, and what Jesus did for us. I wonder if I'm in a house of people that are excited about what God did for us at the cross. Am I in a place of people that are still happy for what Jesus did on the cross? It, 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 it begins and ends at the cross. Amen? However, I want to take us now beyond, Mindy, with the mindset of the disciples after Jesus actually ascended and left them. Think with me for a moment. The mindset of these disciples that have walked with Jesus have fell in love with this man, now not provoc uh, in a perverted way, in a pure way. I have love for men, right? Men, you know, we, and women, we can have that purity in that. Say amen to that. I better get out of this one. It's goofy. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to say something in purity. Uh, but think about it. They love this man. They love this man. Peter even announced him as the Messiah. That's huge. That'll get you thrown out of the synagogue. It's true. The Jewish synagogue will throw you out even today for calling Jesus the Messiah. Now, would you agree with me, church, for just a few moments that this had to be a confusing and even painful experience? Someone you love so much is now no longer there, but they're gone, Pastor Wells. Listen, we know, though, that Jesus had said to them, in John chapter 16, verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is what? Expedient. You all know what that word means? You can look it up in other versions. But it means of highest priority. That wells, Jesus was telling them, it's very important, not that I stay, but that I leave. Now that contradicts everything. Here's this man, this Messiah for Peter. I don't know if the rest made him that at that time. But at least someone they respected highly and loved and followed and had left everything that they knew that was familiar or consistent or of importance. They had walked away from it to follow this man. And now listen... He is gone and he said before many, many times, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to be, he said, build this temple and it'll be torn down and in three days I'll be, he was talking about himself. He said, I must go so, to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. Y'all know these scriptures, right? Time after time, Jesus told them that he would have to go. And here's another time, Danielle, where he says it's, of the most importance, expedient, shout expedient, for you that I go away. Wait, no. <laughs> you see, I don't believe the disciples ever really had the mental place that Jesus was going to leave. For if I go not away, the comforter, the paracletos, the one called alongside to assist, the Holy Spirit, I just sometimes have to go old school. The Holy Ghost, don't say ghost today, they say in the church. I'm sorry, I'm from the old school, y'all. The Spirit of the Lord will not come unto you. But if I what? Say it louder. That's leave. I'll send him unto you. But watch. They stand out there, about as far, it says, as Bethany. He lifts up his hands. He blesses them, and he leaves. Now, watch. He's been saying for three and a half years that he's going to go. But now, listen, church. Come on, you got to put yourself in the disciples' shoes. Please do that. It's something or someone you love so much is gone physically gone 
For real. Come on. What now? I mean, where do I go? What do they do? Church, listen good. Here's a word from the Lord. Catch it now. This is not just mamsy pamsy stuff. I don't care if it was one of you or a thousand of you. This is what we need to hear today. Watch this. We live in a world that think, thinks everything's always going to be the same. We live in a world that thinks nothing ever changes. That nothing will ever leave our lives or be missing. Would you agree with me that we are creatures of habit? We are creatures of habit and we put our nose to the grind. Can I get an amen? We work hard and we're in this rat race. And before you know it, listen, we get in a place where we think there's never, ever going to be any change. Nothing's ever going to maybe leave our lives. God forbid it. And what derails us in life maybe the most is being unprepared for change Refocus, or possibly most of all, the loss of faith, man, is going to talk about losing something. We never prepare for the change that something may not be there that was there. Someone or something, come on, church. And because we think nothing will ever change, we're not prepared. That's how the disciples were. They had gotten such a habit of the ministry and working hard and, and doing the things with Jesus that they didn't never hear it. They never heard him say. They heard it, but they didn't hear it. I want to talk to you today, subtitle, The Power of Loss. Not you, Pastor Steve. The, the pastor of faith, the pastor of word, <laughs> the gifts of the spirit. Wait, wait, you're going to talk about the power of loss before this is over. I pray your oh, glory. Let's just move on. Question. Oh, the anointing just hit me, y'all. I wish y'all was all right there, but it's okay. It's hard to do this. <laughs> Has anything ever walked out of your life? Think about it with me. I mean, absolutely removed itself. I mean, we just knew that everything was all right, right? Everything and everyone was right where they're supposed to be. You and I were trucking right along and wham, blindsided by life's reality. But this can't be. It's not how I saw it. Have you ever been there? It's not how I dreamed it. Have you ever been there? It's not even for quite some time, even how I lived it. Am I helping anybody? My up is now down. My down is now up. I'm in a whirlwind of confusion and pain. Have you ever been there? What is one to do when all of a sudden something so secure, so real, and so sure is no longer there? Now we have a little glimpse into what was going on inside each of the disciples of Jesus. Question on the screen. Can there be any good to come out of the pain of loss? Sometimes loss will make you do what Peter and some of the disciples did after Jesus was resurrected. Jesus had revealed himself 
Stay with me, faith people. It's going to get... <laughs> Jesus had revealed himself in his glorified body three times by the time I'm about to read this scripture. The last time Peter had a chance to defend Jesus, he had denied him three times that he even knew him with vile and terrible cursing. Peter was ashamed of himself. He had not even fought for Jesus. He feels responsible for the death and the loss of Jesus. Anybody in here feel me? Let's see if you've ever been right here. Mike, tell me if you've ever been right here. Watch this scripture. In all that pain, Miss Kathy, Jesus said, Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Maybe you said, in the midst of your pain and your loss, I'm going bake a cake. I'm going eat till I can't eat no more. Come on. Has anything ever walked out of your life that you thought would be there forever? Peter thought Jesus, I don't know what he thought, but he sure didn't think that Jesus would just give himself up. And now he says, baloney on it, I'm going back to what's familiar. Why fishing? Why did they catch nothing? Why they caught, why nothing was caught. Because he was totally, completely out of the will of God. He lost his man, Mr. Gerald. He lost his friend, Mike. He lost, uh, Greg, he lost the guy that he thought would be the one to lead them. To help them, this man had washed his feet. This man showed him how to let go of his boat and everything. By the way, it says here, they jumped into the boat. You know what that tells me? Now look, you didn't just go grab somebody's boat and jump in it. Y'all remember when Jesus took Peter aside, it said Peter left all. Somewhere in those three and a half years... Peter decide to get him an insurance policy. And if this thing don't work out, I'm going to have a boat sitting. Come on. Have you ever thought about that if something doesn't work out, you're going to use something or someone as an insurance policy? Come on, church. I believe Peter had a boat on the side that he never let go. Is there anything in our lives that we never really let go of? That we're so afraid because we might, watch this, I've had people tell me, I can't live for Jesus. i got to give everything up. Hmm. He's not asking us to give everything up. He's asking us to give our lives to him. Upon giving our lives to him, can I say, get an amen? He then will deal with us with things that don't fit in with his plan for our lives. You know why? Listen to me and don't be offended if I call something out. But you know why he would rather us not partake of tobacco? You know why? Because it'll kill us early. And we will abort our assignment for God. Anybody with me? Don't you dare get mad. And if you get mad, you better come love me. I'm going to kiss you. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not going to kiss you. I don't want to get put on Facebook. Pastor kisses somebody. Why do we say, why do we say don't partake in uh, sexual contact outside of marriage? For young people and married people and single divorced people. Because there's diseases out there that Ajax can't take off. 
Can I get an amen? amen. Boy, I'm being honest today. Listen, though. And ultimately, it can kill us. You hear me? God wants us to live long and live strong. Church, say amen to that. He wants us to live healthy. Say amen to that. The reason he tells us, listen, that we get on some of these things sometime. It's not God. I'm not getting saved because God just makes you give up everything. He don't want to give nothing up but our lives. And when we do, oh, what a lifetime. Am I right, saints? Come on. What a lifetime. Those things that are detriment to our lives. Why you don't want us to have a mouth full of cussing? Oh, it's quiet in this spirit-filled church. Huh? We come in church, hallelujah, but outside the church, our mouth is filled with the same things old Peter had. Why is that? What kind of testimony is that, y'all? Huh? What, what kind of blessing is that for people, for us to use those kind of, that kind of language? Can I get an Amen. Whew, if you ever should have wanted to miss a service, you said, my, why did I come to this one? But it's good. Tell me the truth. If your toes are kind of crinkled, listen, listen. Don't run. Stay, right, Papa, D Dad Wells? Stay under this conviction because, listen, where this church has to go as a united this summer, we can't be like the world and have the power of God fall in all its glory. Oh, show me the glory and get outside and act just like the world. It can't be. Why? We'll die prematurely. We'll have no testimony whatsoever. No respect. It is time for the body of Christ to run. You say, Pastor, you picked a Sunday. Look at people are out playing baseball and all kinds. So what? You were supposed to be here and I was supposed to be here. And we were supposed to talk about these nitty gritty things. See, there's a cleansing coming, Mike, to the, power, to the house of God, y'all. Huh? Am I right, church? There's a cleansing coming. Don't be condemned if something was called out. Don't be mad. Don't be a condemned. Just let God. Listen, I've tried for years. Don't try anymore. Give it to him. If you light up, say, for the glory of God, I light this up. And the next one, for the glory of God, I like, before you know it, for the glory. Come on. That was the hardest thing to throw away. I threw my Zippo lighter in the, <laughs> in the Vermilion River at Beaver Park. A Zippo, y'all. Y'all know what a Zippo is? That's that lighter you put the fluid in, old school, Paul Leroy stuff, thick. When you hit it, man, you got light. Huh, Brother Scotty? Huh? Brooke, you remember them old Zippo? You got, huh, Greg, you got some light from them thin things. Now, <laughs> gone in 30, there ain't nothing to that. Zippo. You know you're delivered when you throw your Zippo away. Say amen. And I sang on the platform that night with Sister Wells. And Sister Bessie Chance. Bessie, am I saying it right? Not Betsy, Bessie Chance. It was the last day I had thrown my Zippo. Y'all don't even know that. Threw my Zippo, threw my Marlboros. And Sister Wells and Bessie in the old church and sang for the first time with a freedom because it was the last stronghold from the world that the enemy had on me. <laughs> Except for just like you and I, the things that still bubble up like not acting like I should sometime to her. Can I get it? Oh. Yeah. All of y'all sanctimonious folks. <laughs> uh, or to my friends. Or to people. We all work out our salvation. With fear and trembling. Y'all like to be honest or y'all want to just play this thing? It's time for us to get right, isn't it? It's time for us to just get this thing ready for this outpouring. He ain't going to do it if there's not a praying people. 
He's not going to do it if it's not a clean people. He's not going to do it with people that are playing around with the world. He's not going to show his glory. We're going to have good church services, good singing, good preaching, and everybody's going to go home and keep doing the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm way past that. How about you? Let's get in his presence and let him just remake us. Even if it kind of hurts a little bit. Say amen to that. Oh my God, I don't have but 10 minutes left. I believe Miss Kathy Broussard, he had a boat somewhere. And God's asking us today that boat might be the last thing. Oh, pardon me if I lean a little bit, get my lean on, you know what I mean? <laughs> if I think that boat might have been the last thing that was the hook that was keeping him close to the world. Have you ever had anything that God asked you to give up? And it seems like, Sheila, it would be a loss if I let it go. Dad Wells, when I threw that Zippo away, I must have had a car full of devils. They all were telling me, you'll never smoke again. Yeah, how are you going to do it? It's going to be so hard. You're gonna, and I didn't even have a desire for it. Now, how the Lord works it out in you, don't. But listen, what I'm saying is this, is we look at the last thing that God has really did that grips our heart. And we say, how can I let that go? Some of us have relationships sometime of people that are not born again. And you may ask me, Pastor, well, can't God save him or her after I give myself to them? Hopefully in marriage. I've seen some positive times. I think I've seen more negative times where the person who is not born again begins to pull on the one who is and then there becomes an ultimatum. Me or that church that wants your money. Walmart wants your money. Nobody's hollering joy about Walmart. They want your money. No, God don't want our money. He wants us. And our money is just saying, God, what you sow into, you better believe that's what's, that's what's important to your life. What you give to, oh my God, that's big in your life. Say amen to that. Amen. Say, move on, pastor. Oh, I heard one. <laughs> See, uh, Chris, listen to this one. Next slide, y'all. The devil wants us to let losing something drive us to what's familiar and unchallenging. I'll just go back how many times. She just lets me rant, especially through this through this pain and I sit there and I say oh, I'm done man I told you all that two weeks ago it's true though but it still kind of comes up and I tell her call him I ain't going up there I'm done she just looks at me like I'm dumb <laughs> and lets me finish and then guess what I'm standing in front of you preaching and anointed but we all go through those things let's be honest am I right Where's my amen corner over there? Lauren, y'all good? Huh? Debbie, hey, hallelujah. I feel, uh, James, the amen corner back there or y'all eating uh, Pop-Tarts? Even though Peter and the disciples have seen Jesus three times. Becca, watch this. Even though the disciples and Peter had seen Jesus three times, they still resort to the default mode of going back to what's easy familiar, and most of all, not complicated. Oh, isn't it so easy, Ashley Menard, to resort to what's less complicated in life. Now, God's not trying to make life complicated. We make it 
complicated when we resort to the default mode of ease. A little folding of the hand, a little laying down to rest, and poverty will come on you like a lion. That's what Proverbs says. Poverty is not just money. It's a mindset of fear of loss. You know what grief is? I'm going to really, really, now y'all going to really get mad at me, so I'm going to pull these out. I keep extra ones, Brooke. In case I get far out here from my. <laughs> Are y'all dealing with me today? What did I just say? Okay, now don't get mad. Say, I'm not, say, I love you, Pastor. But someone passes. You know what? It should do this to us when we, ugh, when we hear this from people. Well, I don't know how long it's going to be, Sha but you're going to have to go through the grieving process. You know what grief is? Grief de definition in spiritual things is fear of loss. Well, wait, if that person's already gone and they were a believer... Why should there be, can I tell y'all something? I asked the Lord, I said, don't let me have to say that. And he told me to say it. I've not been to Paul Leroy's grave site. My dad, very, very few times. That's reprehensible. You're the pastor. Don't you have any respect for your dad high and utmost we call him paul leroy i named myself for my grandkids paul lee because that's what they called dad my dad right paul lee paul lee for leroy i'm paul lee with an eye come on y'all <laughs> that hurt anyway well shouldn't you go to the graveside well i hope i don't pass you ain't never gonna come see me at my well listen why 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 He's not there. Can I come over here? Kind of, it looks like I'm getting my, my step on, you know. I'm not on 2nd Street, you know. It's just hurting a little bit. Hey, we love Paul Leroy. Uh, was he gone by the time you came into my life? Okay, our lives. Hey, we love him, but once in a while... We get somebody to go whitewash it, put some flowers. Every, I don't know, Sheila. I ain't going to say how many times because it really is embarrassing. But it's because, watch, not disrespect. It's because when we let him go and we knew he had submitted his all through our dad wells to God, it was, it hurt, come on. It was stinging. I was wailing to the point where my mom said, oh, Steve, you got to get a grip. But, you know, it was just, I was out of, ah. we fished together. We hunted together. We loved each other. Come on. He was kind of a rough character and had a back thing going too. Come on, somebody. But watch this. He ain't there. He ain't there. So once in a while, give him one of these and one of those, and I'm out, right? Yeah. I know respect. But that's kind of a thing that Peter was going through. He had to realize, and the disciples, that it was best for them there would be power in the loss of Jesus. Do you know they were actually. Oh let me say this. Watch this. Watch this. Why did they go to the default mode? You're going to want to write this note down. We're almost out of time. Watch this. Watch this on the screen. Is it true sometimes when we lose something. That the aftermath. Oh not that one. The aftermath of the loss may not come back the way we thought it would. Think about it. After the loss, we thought it would be this way, but it's a whole different way. Huh? 
Peter and the disciples were actually disappointed in the way that this had went down. They had left everything they knew to follow this Messiah and were even told to bring a sword. But our man, listen, Jesus had told them, find some swords. They said, we have two. He said, that's enough. They were just talking protection. Jesus was also man, so he was man and all God, and he was going in and out of that divine and man, and it was just, he knew he had to die. Is there any swords in here? Peter said, two. He said, good. But watch. You know what the disciples thought of that? <gasps> Finally, he's going to rise up. And be the king riding on the horse of victory. And when it came down in Caiaphas' uh, courtyard and he's asked these questions instead of rising up with a sword, Greg, he just willfully gives himself. This is confusing to Peter. Why don't he even fight? Oh, y'all feel me? Why don't play? You gonna play something for me? You on vacay? <laughs> My girl been been with the. She went give her tithe to Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Y'all love me. <laughs> Watch this one. Jesus didn't even put up a fight, Danielle. It's confusing. God, you're asking me to give this thing up. Watch this. I mean, watch. There's somebody in here that would say maybe, or you know someone. The man I married said he'd be there for me. You let just a little opposition or a little pressure come our way and he ran for the hills. That relationship that looked so promising, that career, that education, that friend, is there really power in loss? I'll leave you with this story. His name is Beethoven. Beethoven. At 29 years old, don't you get my thunder. I'm picking. At 29 years old, he began to lose his hearing. Beethoven. Say Beethoven. Stand with me. Say Beethoven. Come to the altar with me. Come on, let's close out like this with this story. Come, come little ones. Come of all ages and all shapes and sizes. Put your toes against the carpet. Come inside. Would y'all come this way with me? Come on, I don't bite. Come on, fill up the gaps. There we go, fill up the gaps. Come on, come little ones. Come big ones. Come medium ones. Come children. <laughs> Lisa's name was Beethoven. 29 years old writing music and he begins to begins to lose his hearing at 44 he is stone deaf a music composer what is he to do sanchez what a music do you know how important my brother hearing is to a music Composer, Say amen. <laughs> Lauren, at 44, stone deaf, he goes into the darkest time of his life. You can Google it and look it up. It talks all about this. Joy knows well. He goes into depression. Have you ever been there? Be honest with me. Have you ever gone into a time that was dark? That was ugly. That was not healthy. I've been there. I've been there recently. <laughs> Got to come out. You can't stay in it. May I have a seat right here for a moment? Totally deaf. Isolates himself. Listen. Put up about where it says the devil again. The, the devil. Duh. Okay, find it. Don't worry about it. Listen, this is what the enemy will try to do. Just leave that up. Don't find it. Leave it up. The enemy tries during times of so said loss of something or someone, tries his best to get us to pull away from one another. Say amen to that. 
during that Debbie, you just been through that hardest time, Abu. That hard time makes you want to. It makes you want. Doesn't mean you have to. Makes you feel like the enemy will say, if you'll isolate yourself, then nobody, and you can just get it, just drown in your tears. It is unhealthy, unspiritual to pull back into those dark places and not listen. For we are not ignorant of the devices and schemes of the devil. Watch this. For watch we expose them, not you, him, and put him where he belongs. Where? Resist the enemy and he will. Please. Say it loud. Please. He will. Please. Gotta resist. Gotta resist. He's in joy, that dark place, pitiful place. No one knows why. But all of a sudden, look at me, look at me. Deaf, say deaf. To a music composer. But he just comes out of it. Nobody knows really why. You might know more about it. Comes out of that depression and picks up the pen and the music paper and begins to write. He said this, watch. Hit it. Hit it next one yeah that one read with me ready read after the de but to us it would be loss to us like me oh god woe is me i'm gonna sit back in my easy chair nobody cares about when i got uh 200 300 people a dad in the spirit people who love me praying for me but the enemy will say just get in that corner you don't let nobody in you he's caging the devil's caging well kelly brian i'm i'm gonna stay in my easy chair me you ever said me come on say me I'm not letting anybody in Kristen. Listen, where's that girl? There she is again. She broke through. She broke through. But Beethoven began to write after he called the loss of his hearing distractions. What do we have? Come on, that's our point of contact today. What do we have? Huh? I'm not singling you out. I just wanted to shake your hand. I didn't get to this morning. What do we have, church, that we've not let go of, that we think would be a great loss, but may be a what? A what? Lift your hands. <laughs>